Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Beyond the Tape, a podcast that focuses on people doing rad things behind the scenes and kind of in front of the scenes of the Australian mountain bike industry. Um, this episode is probably one of my most wanted to do after meeting um, our guest for the first time in Medina last year. An absolute legend um, when it comes to being a personality and just being an all-around good dude. Before I introduce our guests, though, let's uh, talk about our sponsors, the guys that keep this uh, program running. Firstly, we've got Taylor Trails. Um, They are Tassie's specialist for statewide transfers, private group shuttles, all-inclusive packages uh, operating out of all the major mountain bike networks in Tasmania. So if you want to go down to Tasmania, explore places like St. Helens, Medina, Derby, or the west coast of Tasmania all in one trip, Um, These guys are a dedicated private group operator and they cater for people up to 18 people. Custom built shuttles and trailers and racks and they do everything. So they take the hassle out of your next trip to Tassie. Basically, you don't have to plan. You just go on your ride. FE Sports came on uh, midway through the year and they're the Australian leading experts in sporting product imports. So they distribute and wholesale a bunch of um, brands such as Pirelli, Wahoo, Aftershocks, 100%, Theragun, Vera, Absolute, Gaufa, and so many more. Um, it'd be hard to find something they don't stock. If you can't find anything in their range, um, it's definitely worth hitting up to up Biker. They do some really niche brands such as Noble Wheels, Factor Com- Components and Dumonte lubricants. I uh, just got a set of their new hubs um, on my bike ready for nationals, and uh, those things feel rad. Um, I'm pretty sure they're guaranteed to get you 69% faster and 420 times more stylish in all areas of riding. So hit those guys up. NS Dynamics, those guys are the Australian premier suspension service company. Um, they've been doing it for over 20 years, and they'll make your suspension feel better than new. Every time I have got my suspension back from these guys, I can't believe how much better it works. And I'm never without my suspension for more than four days. That's including Auspost postage. So, you know, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Franked Mountain Bike Apparel comes from the Western Australian coast. Those guys do cutting edge, lightweight racing jerseys, super durable shorts, and probably the most comfortable pants I've ever worn. They're probably the only pants, I would argue, don't look better on the bedroom floor. They are super comfy, and I've been wearing them while shooting photos and doing, well, everything, really. Um, I've loved those pants. Um, I wish I had them in my emo days because they fit real well, really comfortable, and you can even slide some knee pads under, knee pads under there without looking like a stormtrooper. So jump over to Frank and grab some of those clothing. As usual, thanks to Dirt Surf and Mud Guards for keeping the mud out of my eyes. Crush Oz for keeping the mud off my bike and Fist for keeping my hands warm. Don't forget you can use Beyond the Tape at checkout at any of those brands and they should be able to help you, well, get comfortable and get better on the bike, really. Um, Let's move on to this episode because I've been dribbling on enough. This episode is with one of the people that I can never pronounce their name right. It's with Jordo Prokaya. Um, Jordo is a bit weird in the way that he is one of Australia's fastest riders. He's been at World Cups. He's been top 30 at World Cups. He's been, you know, Nationals top 10 at least. He came top 10 on a trail bike in Medina. Honestly, one of the best riders when it comes to finding free speed using the ground. Um, He blew me away when I watched him ride in Medina and I knew I had to get him on as a guest straight away. We talk about trail building, we talk about being a parent, we talk about traveling around the world, a bit of everything. Now, full notice, um, we got a little bit lit in this podcast. Um, It turned out to be a long night and uh, some espresso martinis were had, so it does get a little bit rowdy by the end. One of our favorite people, Tom Maslin, can be heard talking shit in the background thankfully the video didn't work on this one when he got his nuts out um so if you hear us kind of awkwardly looking over uh, that's the reason why thanks to the guys from pirate life racing for setting this up if you don't follow those guys on instagram you should uh they're one of a groundbreaking teams in um australia 
Anyway, enough of my dribble. Enjoy the podcast. Grab beer, grab water, grab a wine, grab whatever makes you happy. And we'll speak soon. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Shut up, Tom. Giordo, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for jumping on. Cheers, mate. Yeah, good to be here. First time I've done an in-person one for probably like two years, thanks to COVID. Yeah, pretty lucky, eh? W-A-S-A. And we're in Mount Gambia, like the mecca of Mount Park for Australia. Yeah, yeah. That was good. (laughs) Just a random meeting. Yeah, that was good. Got out for a trail ride today and that. Trails here are sick. Yeah. Yeah. A bit different to WA. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, way less rocks, which is nice mm. for a change. Yeah. It's nice to ride some dirt. Don't get that much in WA. So. I think it's like the only loam in SA too. I'd yeah. Right. Like it's not probably like as loamy as Kangas, maybe, but like it's not. Like nowhere else in SA is that loamy. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Real lucky then. Um, for those who don't know who you are, because I'm guessing there's probably a few. Um, who are you and what are you going to do? And... Um, yeah, so my name is Jordan Prakara, 27, from Perth, Western Australia. Um, yeah, ride for the Pirate Life, Grey's Own Pirate Life team. Um, yeah, racing like Enduros and Downhill. And yeah, full-time trail builder as well for Three Chilies Design. Oh, sick. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, if you hear any weird noises, it's because the whole team is here. <laughs> <laughs> Just peering in. Just admiring your, yeah, yeah. your glow. Um, What's the trail building like over there? Like, is it three chilies? Is that the only company kind of doing stuff over there? Nah, there's three. There's about three companies over there. But yeah, we're pretty lucky at the moment. We've got some like real good projects mm. going on. Like, actually, yeah, building some like real good sort of tech, natural stuff down in Nana, like southwest, like three hours south of Perth. And yep. then, um, yeah, I've been running a job like at the goat farm, like maybe five minutes from my house. Yeah. Up in the Perth Hills. And that's, yeah, pretty cool. Like, it's, yeah, it's not the best hill sort of thing. It's always, like, mm. going to be a struggle to build on, but it's so local to so many people and, like, actually building some proper big jumps there. Right? Those, hey, yeah. Like, yeah. is that that shark fin and, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, like, it, that thing will actually be a world-class, like, jump trail, like, double yeah. black jump trail. They're all gaps, like, and they're, yeah, yeah. What's that shark fin? How long is that shark fin? Because I only saw, like, the front on view, like... Uh, it's, like, 11 metres, that one. Yeah. And then it goes into, like, a, yeah, double sort of... Be like, I think that's nine, just over nine meters, but the lip on it'd be like three meters tall or something. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, sick that they're letting us do it, eh? Because yeah. it's, yeah, it, people like at the start, there might only be like a hundred people in Perth that can mm. ride it like for the first six months or whatever, but as people like work up to it, at least like, yeah, in three years, there'll actually be some progression. Mm. Like 500 people might be able to ride it for sure. Because, yeah, I feel like that's sort of been a thing that's been lacking in Perth and then probably like all over Australia is like just. You can get so fast without learning how to jump. Like it's, oh, dude, yeah, yeah, it's so gnarly. Like yeah. yeah, one of our fastest riders, like well, one was one of our fastest, Benoit. He used to like he can pedal anywhere and yeah. super fit. But we went to Medina with him and he can't jump. Yeah, like he can't. Anything there is just too big. Yeah, and we just yeah. don't have it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good to give people that chance. Eh? Are you like? Do you build progressive jumps for that? Like, is there a way for people to jump from smaller to medium to bigger, or is it just yeah, yeah, so that park's like, I think it's got like two blue flow trails, um, it'll have a black jump trail and then the double black jump trail and then down the bottom there's going to be a big skills park oh, cool. with like a like two blue jump lines, one black jump line, a double black jump line and a mulch jump, so yeah, yeah it's like... Yeah. Is that crazy. the one with like the wooden ramps and stuff or is that somewhere else? No, nah, it's down in Albany. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick, man. There's so much good stuff getting built in Perth at the moment. That looks like it looks similar to kind of what's happening at Bear Creek. Like yep. the Albany one. Like yeah. You've got yeah. those kind of staged stuff. It's yeah, for sure. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's unreal. How long have you been building for? Um yeah. about two yeah, two just over two years now, eh? Right? So yeah. I'm a yeah, chippy by trade. Okay. Yeah. So I just came back from, yeah, World Cups one year and, like, there was, like, no chippy work in Perth. And then, yeah, yeah, Paul, who owns the company, like, I hit him up about, I've known him for maybe, like, 50 from in Perth. So, yeah, and just started doing that. And, yeah, it's unreal because I get to do, I still get to use my trade and stuff, which I love. Um, Yeah, still love doing that. I've built some big 
big bridges and stuff yep, recently, yep. like, and, yep. yeah, stuff like that. And then, yeah, doing the machine stuff as well. It's like, I mean, I love it. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Does it help with your writing at all? You um, I don't know. Is it either, well, no, I have been going, like, better and better since I have been doing it. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to say. Eh? It could either, like, help or hinder because you could definitely, like, start overanalyzing stuff mm. because you're, like, looking at it through a critical eye of, like, how it should be, how you think it should be built, or yeah, yeah. But I yeah, I reckon you sort of like mm. someone else would because you're yeah. looking at more options and like know yeah. what's actually feasible at speed, sort of thing. Because you yeah, you've done it before and you've like built it before. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, you reckon it's better to be a fast rider and build trails than a slow rider and build trails? Yeah, um, to a certain like, extent, yeah. hey, because I definitely struggle to build down. Sometimes, like if I'm building blue mm. flow trail, I like to struggle to froth on it because it's not. That's the hard thing with flow trails is that it's, it's. I don't know. It's too, like the skill level way more than a natural trail. Mm. Like a natural blue trail, you could have like on because you just go faster and like make different stuff. But if it's like a blue jump trail, is only going to have a jump a certain height and length. Yeah. So like, you can only build it as. You can build it as good as you can, sort of thing. But I'm like, I'm always going to have more fun on like a black jump trail. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely. I think like obviously, if you're you can't you if you can't ride a double black jump trail, you can't build one because you've got True. no yeah. idea of like the physics involved of like how fast mm-hmm. you hit and stuff or what it's going to feel like and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I think backs are dry. Like the first is the same thing. Like the blue trails are harder because they're so easy, but then to find like jumps that you can hit longer and blue trail yeah. you can make it fun for yeah that's always the yeah the trick eh, is just trying to work that stuff in but yeah like I oh, yeah it's definitely harder for me to build a blue trail than it is for me to build the black trail because yeah. I'm trying to think of how to make it fun for both yeah. levels sort of thing do you follow um, Miko in yeah did you see what he built yeah man <laughs> <laughs> that yeah that is yeah he's a wild man eh yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. <laughs> I've seen that bit of that photo and I was like respect yeah. yeah and then he's got like this new double black he's built and yeah man can't wait to get him on hey yeah that'd be sick. cool yeah. yeah um so how did you kind of get into mountain biking um i've always yeah dad so dad's like a skater and sort of been in okay. yeah rides motorbikes and stuff flat out and um yeah i guess i got into it through that but it's all like yeah. just always been mountain bikes like even yeah back to, I used to live in the UK from when I was like two to I was um, 10 yeah yeah just like jumping mates on ramps in the street and that sort of stuff like just loved it eh? and then moved over moved over back over to Perth um, when I was 10 and yeah sort of surfed for a few years because we lived lived on the coast yeah and then yeah sort of got more into it uh, would have been 14 also, yeah, started okay. racing yeah. like, um, yeah, did my first like club the goat farm actually. It was funny. Yeah. yeah, back in two thousand seven. Yeah, and then just just loved it. Eh? From there, just kept kept going with it. Yeah, yeah. it was like there's a good scene around there because obviously there's that like, guy Sam Hill, someone. Yeah, who's kind of done okay at mountain biking. Yeah, yeah. So like, was there a good scene outside of what he was kind of doing and bringing to the sport? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That definitely those. Um, I don't know if it was just because like it was new for me, but up to like oh nine seemed like the glory. Obviously, there would have been like better years mm. again before that, but they seemed like the glory years in Perth. Like just yeah, okay. yeah, used to have like a race called the Highway Cup, and then like state champs, and it all like seemed I don't know, just seemed real cool. Like, yeah. Not that it's not now, but yeah, downhill back then. Like I don't think it's yeah, got back to where it was mm. sort of back then, but it's always going to be hard with ha- not having the hills and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like you're never going to have a downhill scene like you are in Vic because you yeah. can just ride all the tracks like just as fast on a trail bike. And you don't have three like massive states just sitting on your border. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always going to be a big height to get over sort of thing. So, yeah. Were you kind of quick off the, when, once you started racing or did it take a while to get up to speed or? Um, yeah, it was pretty fast it's funny when i like i just watched that many like movies and stuff like seeing that many like mountain bike movies that i was like watching it i was like man i reckon i'm i reckon i'm fast like i'm 
I'm going to beat everyone here. And, I'm like, oh, yeah. and um, yeah, realised that wasn't going to be the case yeah. pretty quick, eh? But I think I got third on my first, like, club round. And then that, like, those first few years, I was sort of, like, top three, like, the state rounds, the under-15s and stuff. And it was kind of like that the whole way through. I think I won, like, a couple of under-19 state champs. But, yeah. yeah, and then came over and did... Uh, when they had national champs over here for, like, three years in a row. Yeah, at Eagle. Yeah, 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 yeah. so I would have been, like, under-17s and 19s. Mm. So I was, like, thereabouts, sort of thing, pretty mm. fast, like, sort of top 10. But that was the year, like, we had, like, um, yeah, so Troy, mm. Dino, um, Jack Moore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, no, six of them are still killing it over there, sort of thing. So, it's, yeah, it was a, definitely a tough year to, like, make a junior world team that year or anything, so. Well, that was, like, the second wave. I call it the second yeah. wave of Aussie yeah, Gowns. Sure. Like, it was after Rennie and stuff and then died off. And, yeah. Yeah. Was it kind of cool watching those guys grow up in, in the past or was it always kind of worrying? Like, you, you didn't know if you were going to be able to beat them? Yeah, it wasn't even like a... I guess there wasn't as much social media back then. True. So I didn't even really think... Well, I don't even really know who, like, anyone was, like, when I come, yeah. come yeah. over. Like, because, yeah, yeah, you don't... You never race against them. So, like, you just see, yeah, see them on the start line, I guess. Eh? Like, you'd know, I know, like, Troy and Connor and stuff, but that was pretty much the extent of it. Yeah. 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 And so was it, like, your goal to go to World Cups and, and do that thing? Were you trying to get on the, yeah. world, like the world's team and do all that type of stuff? Yeah, definitely, yeah. That was definitely, like, a goal for me. Just because, I guess, we had, like, uh, tr- who we had? We had, like, Joel Bain and Mitch Delft and stuff, yeah. like, back in 07. They were on, like, the world's team and that. And, yeah, just... I don't know, it's like the pinnacle way, like yep. you want to make the junior world team sort of thing, like it's, it's a big deal. But yeah, it just like wasn't wasn't quite mm. fast enough though, to make the cut. But yeah, and then was it like easy to kind of follow the national series around when you were like at that point because it's so different now? But how was it from like WA? Cause yeah, it wasn't as if there was many rounds over there. Nah, no, nah, we haven't had a national downhill round since two thousand and five. Okay. Yeah. yeah wow. So it was like all. Oh, I think I've I've done like now. I did like national champs and then maybe did one other mm. a national round, but pretty big stretch like for my parents like to get yeah, to get me yeah. over there like with yeah. them sort of thing like it's yeah not yeah overly sort of like rich or anything. So it was yeah it's kind of like you've got two chances a year like to mm. make it count like, like have a crack. How, how long's a flight from WA to like Queensland or something like that? Or if you were to drive, like driving there. Oh, well. driving's like not even a yeah, yeah not a possibility. Thing, right? yeah. Yeah. It's like a couple of boys did it for those like national champs. Yeah, and right. Stuff, but yeah, it's a big job. Eh? Even like to fly to Adelaide's like three, yeah, three hours. Yeah, right. And then yeah, Melbourne's like three and a half. Yeah. Sort of thing. So. And Queensland would be like five. Yeah, yeah. I think Cairns was like seven hours or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> tip, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like in America or something where you just take a two-hour flight and you're in another yeah. state. And yeah, yeah. Did, uh, yeah, it's not super accessible, but yeah. Did, did you ever think about moving? Uh, I don't think so, eh? Because all my family, like, we were pretty grounded in Perth yeah. and, like, everything else was, like, pretty good that was going on there. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't, I don't know. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really enter my mind because it wasn't going to be up to me ultimately sort of thing but looking back like it you definitely could there's definitely been people that have like sort of um yes we'll take a beer time. yeah yeah there's definitely people that have made <laughs> well, i just wanted to watch you try that thank, until you, it. thank you um yeah there's definitely people that have made that transition and like it mm. worked out for them sort of thing and yeah they've benefited from it you think it's like almost better if you're if you were like, if you moved, you might be away from your home base, so like it won't, you won't be as comfortable, and you might not perform as good. If you know what I mean? Yeah, possibly. Um, but it's it's all just about like writing the stuff that you you want to compete at, I guess. Like if mm-hmm. you're just happy to be like a yeah top guy in WA, then you'll be sweet just writing the stuff in WA. Yeah. Because that's what you're going to be racing on. But then if you if you like write in WA, that's all you do, and then you mm-hmm. expect to go well in Victoria, like, you've got to be someone special like Sam to do or, like, Johnny Waddell or something to do something like that because otherwise, yeah, it's just 
not really going to happen. Yeah. Like, so foreign, the stuff that you're writing over in WA compared to, yeah, like over in Eastern States. So, mm. yeah, it's just stuff that you, you just got to put the time in, eh? And, yeah. yeah. Got Johnny was on there, hey? Yeah, yeah. I always thought yeah. he was from East Coast. Yeah. yeah. I forget he's on there. He's, a, he's such a dude, hey? Mm. I love that guy. Yeah, that was a good potty, eh? Yeah. Enjoyed that one. Yeah. yeah. And not, it's crazy, like, not many people know. No, nah, they wouldn't, is. man, because... It, he was out of the yeah, industry yeah. before and now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Was Sam Hill like a good influence for you? I've heard some stories about Sam. I'm not going to say anything, but was he a good influence for like mountain biking and stuff? Yeah, over there? Yeah. yeah, he was huge. I remember like growing, yeah, growing up and going to those first races. Like that was like 07 when he was like just yeah, yeah. Lord, like yeah. just. World Cup overall and world champion in the same mm, year, and just right. yeah. yeah, like so, he, like he come he came to a few like local races, mm. and you just like seen him in like first or like all those movies and stuff, yeah. and you're just like, oh, like holy frothing. shit, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, so you did all that, but how did you kind of get to your first World Cup? Like, what um, what steps did you have to take to get there from WA? Yeah, so I sort of I did those years, um. Yeah, junior stuff, and then, like, didn't just sort of miss the boat there, and then, like, kind of stopped. Didn't, I always had a bike and stuff, but I sort of stopped riding for, like, eight eight months to a year sort of thing when I was, like, 18, just sort yeah. of did the typical 18 yeah. thing. I was on every weekend yeah. and, yeah. yeah, all that business sort of thing, and then, yeah, sort of got a bit more back into it when I was, yeah, just turned 19. Yeah. Did like a couple of national rounds with a couple of the boys from WA and did like okay, and I was like, oh, this is going all right. And then there was the Asia Pacific Downhill Championships they used to have in Bali. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was 2014, and um, yeah, we went over for that because it's like super close from Perth. Yeah. It's like, yeah, three hour flight. Yeah, true. Yeah. And it's sick, like, you can surf in the morning mm. and then go practice in the afternoon. Yeah. Like, just kind of similar to like WA in yeah, a sense because it was so dusty and rocky. Mm. And it, yeah, just felt comfortable. And, um, yeah, a few, like, World Cup guys used to go yeah, over and yeah. do that. Like, Remy Tyrion won it for a couple of years. That's right. Um, yeah. Who else? Like, Kuskus. Cool, cool. And then mm. Wynn used to go over for it a fair bit. Yeah. All those guys loved it, hey? Yeah, yeah. it's such a sick event. Yeah. Hopefully we get, yeah, it happens again, eh, yeah. in the future. But I ended up getting fifth at that race that year, like, on the podium. I mm. just beat Win. Yeah, okay. And, um, yeah, like, 1000 bucks US prize money and stuff as well. So yeah, I was just sick. like, whoa, it's man. Like 10 grand yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, man, this is, yeah, mm. this is all good, eh? And then, yeah, I I think I must have done, like, a couple of national rounds after that. And, um, yeah, it's just me and a mate, um, Carl Pickerskill. He's just, like, a real moto lord yeah, from okay. WA. Yeah. But he started, like, riding mountain bikes with me pretty flat out. And we were both just sort of frothing on it. And we are like, oh should try and maybe go do like a world cup like may as well have, have a yeah. bit of a crack like he was like a national level motocross rider as well yeah and we were like wait so yeah yeah it's pretty funny we ended up going over to whistler for like a week before i rode there and then rocked up into quebec yeah. where montaigne Anne is and we hired like a u-haul <laughs> and then went to walmart and like made bunk beds in like the high van <laughs> so there was like three of us sleeping in there like made like bunk beds up and down and then like i slept hor- yeah horizontally like across the van yeah and yeah so we had like three bikes three gear bags three boys <laughs> sleeping in there um just in the pit like in the car park like i want to say yeah it's pretty funny just swimming in, yeah swimming in the like the waterfall at the bottom yep. of the hill every day and yeah i don't know i sort of like forget about that trip but it's yeah, it's unreal, eh? It's and yeah, like a common common pilgrimage for like most Aussies to do that. Pretty eh? standard, it's, like, eh? it's even funnier that it's like in a like in a high van yeah, as well. Yeah, like, you're just <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, nailing stuff to the inside of the van, and that's pretty sick. Like we, I just loved that track. It just felt so sick to yeah, ride okay. something yeah, right. like that. I just remember, I don't know, watching it that much in movies. And yeah, so like we both ended up qualifying for our first World Cup. So I think he got like 67th and I got 65th or something yeah, qualifying okay. back when it was top 80, top 80 qualifying. Sure. And yeah, I was just like sick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do I so, do now? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, I had a pretty, I think, yeah, I had a like pretty decent run. I think I might have even got caught out with a bit of rain. So I was like a bit hesitant and then it stopped raining, raining again. But mm. yeah, I still ended up like 53rd at my first yeah, World cool. Cup. So yeah, I was stoked with that, eh? I think like 
you don't realize that um, like 60 people qualify, but it's like 200 people could be racing that day. Yeah. Like yep. you don't ever see like the entry yeah. list. Yeah, that's it. And it was even, would have been like even more back when it was top 80 qualifying because mm, like, it was sort of like not easier to qualify, but mm. there would have been more people that thought they would have had a crack. Like Leo mm. Gang used to get like 300 yeah. entries and stuff to a race. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. why they start B practice at like six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 So. What was like B practice? What was B practice like? And then yeah. Wasn't too bad. Like that. I don't. Man, I think I've only been in B practice a couple times because like okay. I've had like yeah. I've been lucky to do like certain races and having it's all just based on UCI. Yeah, points. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think I've like just scraped by like Sick. a couple of numbers above into yeah. A practice most of the time. I think I've only done it once. But yeah, man, it's a battle. Mm. B practice because you you're riding a completely different track to yeah, what true. you're gonna actually yeah. qualify or race on like it's mm. not the same track but like you're out there skimming like skimming all the mud off <laughs> yeah, the boys yeah, in the morning yeah, yeah, you're yeah. doing track yeah. prep for them yeah exactly yeah yeah what was it like going to like, that track's pretty gnarly hey like it, today it is I don't know I don't yeah know what it was like back yeah then. no it was still just so fast and mm. yeah it's weird that like I felt comfortable on it because we don't have anything yeah, about that's fast like, yeah. in WA because the hills are small so we're always mm. milking milking the hill and stuff but yeah I just loved everything about it I just felt like you were I like, hadn't ridden moto by that, mm. by that point but I just like yeah just felt like you were yeah, yeah fifth year wide like yeah on a moto especially through all the grass sections and stuff like it was just yeah yeah, yeah. I know like the boys from SA like Troy and Connor um, they feel like it, they're better at downhill World Cups because they know how to generate speed. Is it the same thing from like WA where you kind of got to yeah, learn how to generate it? Definitely, so can... yeah, for sure. And I reckon that's something I've like gotten way better at recently. Mm. Just yeah, been riding like BMX tracks like, yeah. for like the last five years or so, and I like just realised I just didn't know how to pump. Mm. Like just pumping like all arms, eh? and yeah. I was like, oh yeah, right. Yeah. These legs actually probably do a lot more than, <laughs> yeah than the yeah. arms. So yeah, for sure, you definitely yeah. You just sort of always working on where you can like generate speed and stuff because you you don't have the luxury of just being able to let off the brakes and mm. hang it out because yeah but you don't, you don't go anywhere radio, no. yeah. yeah. What was your second World Cup after um, Montana and like where'd you kind of go from there? Um, oh, so that year, so because I got fifty third that year, that was like good enough to um, make it for the world. So yeah, it's pretty funny. I like got home from that trip and like had like I was like still an apprentice. Yeah. Carpenter at the time, and I'd like spent all my money. And I got home, and then um, I got like a letter in the mail, like a few days after I got home, saying that like I'd been selected for the world team, and I was like, oh, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty cool. I'm not going to be able to go though. Yeah, and then, and then yeah, so like dad was like, nah, like you've got to go. I'd only been back for like two weeks or something, and it was like I think then I had to fly out like a week later or something. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was sick. Like dad put up some money for me, and then like the the local downhill club put up like two oh, grand sick. for me to yeah, travel over there and stuff. So yeah, it was so cool. Eh? And then that was an experience riding that place in like the hissing rain. Like, like you, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, definitely an eye opener. Eh? Like you mm. actually can't start. Like you, yeah, you're just like at the mercy of the hill pretty much. Like, like from cameras and stuff, everyone says about us all hard as far. And, and that bottom, up there. Yeah, that bottom bit. The top's gnarly because it's so fast and there's mm. just sniper stuff everywhere. But, but yeah, as soon as you like get into that steep stuff down the bottom, it's mm. pretty dogs on, eh? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit happening. What was your result at Worlds? Like, how'd you go there? Uh, not too bad, eh? I, I think I ended up 55th, so. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's all right, pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't have qualifiers for that, right? Like, so you could have. Nah, they do now, but yeah, yeah. so like. I think there was like probably two. I think like oh yeah, caught three because they they have like everyone. Yeah, there. anyone so can like, Yeah, and it, it just goes off like doesn't go off seating. It just goes off your number. So I caught mm. like three people in front of me that were like from Kazakhstan or <laughs> yeah, yeah, like exactly, just yeah. cool randoms. So like, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was like I was pretty stoked with that. Mm. Like it was just more of an experience than anything. I was pretty happy with fifty fifth. But what was like the support from the Oz team and stuff like for that one? Because I remember like Benny and Zwar and had a few issues with it. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of <laughs> the way that they worded it seemed that it would be covered a lot more than what it was. A eh? like, I got home, I thought we'd paid some stuff, and then got home to like a fifteen hundred dollar invoice, and I was like, uh, whoa, 
booked this for? And yep. yeah, like I paid for all my flights over there and everything. Mm. It was just like a co- like accommodation and stuff. But yeah, there was just sort of like yeah, there was just stuff like miscellaneous on the invoice and yeah, stuff. Okay. And I was like, what's this eight hundred bucks? And yeah. yeah, I think we ended up paying it in the end, sort of thing. But it's pretty sad that you can't. Yeah, like you don't get the support to be able to do that. Like you definitely see yeah. why like Benny and Ollie went to Sweden. Like I think like I don't the, know. the most hunters like. I mean, I've said well, I won't go down this path too much, but like, I'm just think you get selected for worlds. Like, you you go, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. Well, like from yeah, from like your average person's perspective, yeah. they wouldn't know. They wouldn't like. They wouldn't have a clue that you've got to pay your own way there. Like, yeah. what other sport would would you have to do that with? Like, if yeah. you're like going to, you're literally going to represent your country at an event. Like yeah. you're not there to represent a team or anything like that. You can't run like a, a race well, jersey or anything. You at all. Yeah. No, no. Like you can't run your sponsors on your jersey. Mm. Like you're there to literally represent the federation. So yeah. where, like, what other, like, yeah, what other event would you have to pay your own way? I'm mean, sure there's others. There would yeah. be, yeah, yeah. But it's maybe around eight, eight k or something. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, and I don't know. So you're having all these. Pretty, like they're pretty sick results. Well, let's be honest. Like, yeah. To qualify for a World Cup is not easy. Nah. We. How long were you privateer for? Like, have um, you been? So yeah. So after that, when I got back, I ended up getting hooked up with um, Giant Australia, okay. which is sweet. So we had like a downhill team. It was like me, Timmy Eaton, mm. uh, Jay Bart. Oh, uh, I can't remember couple others like tommy crimmins and stuff yeah cool yeah so that was sweet that was like good support for a That'd few be a years good yeah, yeah so yeah. they like were only interested in me riding in australia sort of thing because they had their own global mm. stuff but i was like oh well i want to ride like i'll race national stuff but i'd like i really want to try have a crack at world cups mm. so yeah for those two years like i went over and bought a van in the uk me and laura my wife went over the first year um mm. five months yeah, five months over there living in the van together, like racing World Cups and stuff, and got some decent sort of top 50, top 60 results. Um, yeah, and then the second year I went over, same year riding for Giant, went over and travelled with uh, Remy Morton. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that was sweet. Me and him, yeah, did like a four months stint together before yeah. he cooked himself at Loose Fest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, oh, same wow. thing. Like, I was getting. That that year in seventeen, I'd um, moved to Queenstown for like the start of sixteen, uh, end mm. of sixteen, start of seventeen, and lived there for eight months. Yeah, cool. Just wanted to be somewhere where I could train, train yeah. and ride like actual downhill tracks. Yeah. And then yeah, I got to the first. I did the first World Cup in Lords that year and got fiftieth, and I was like, no, I'm pretty happy with that. Went That's back to Queenstown, yeah. and then yeah, I was back. We went to Fort William, me and Remy, and I was, I think I was like. 30, 30th at like the first few splits in qualifying mm. and then absolutely hooked my ankle like I like slipped a pedal coming onto that flat drop oh across the yeah, road yeah. and I thought in hindsight I should have just tried to huck over it but I thought it wasn't that high so I just tried to ride off the <laughs> land yeah, yeah. one foot down and then pedal back on and like as soon as I come off the drop I was like oh no I just landed with that foot down oh. that got folded and then yep. yeah I ended up like not being able to race. They told me it wasn't, they x-rayed it and told me it wasn't broken. Mm. But it, yeah, I got home like yeah. later that year and yeah, got an MRI and stuff and I went to see the specialist and he's like, oh, where are your crutches? I was like, yeah. what do you mean? He's like, your ankle's still broken in three spots and you've got like real bad ligament damage. <laughs> and, yeah, so yeah, it was a couple of good years of Remy and yeah. stuff. Like yeah, over there and then the year after with Cole Lucas as well so yeah, yeah cool. a thick couple of years like just sort of yeah 17 i started doing some aws stuff as mm. well and just sort of mixing it up but that's when that sort of started to appeal to me a bit more because it's man it's so hard as a privateer if you like you go over there and you can be super fast like you can be mm. easy quick enough to qualify go over there have like a tiny mistake a puncture you've paid all that money to get and there you- and you don't even get to race yeah whereas like at least like the enduro stuff you get value for money but if you're paying yeah, that. If you're yeah. paying to go over there from like australia if you're on back like at least then you're guaranteed like a race start if you've got the points to make mm. the entry sort of thing so yeah sort of was still qualifying for world cups and racing them and i was just sort of starting 
to lean. I don't know how people, those guys race World Cups for so many years in a row at the same venue and stuff. Like, I, I did, like, get it, four yeah. years, and I was kind of already over it. Like, you get the nuts, but, like, oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it just got to the point where I was like, this is, it is sick. Like, I still love downhill, but I was sort of like, this just seems the tracks are sick in EWS. Like, mm. get to cool, go to like real cool locations all the time. Like, going to South America to race your bike and stuff. Like, yeah. probably going to start leaning to this, mm. especially just because it's so much easier to train for in yeah, okay. WA. Yeah, right. yeah, true. You, yeah. you can't train for it like Sam did for that, that many years somehow. But yeah, you can't train for like World Cups. No, coming from WA, like it's just it's not like plausible. Like mm. it's, yeah, so, and the enduro stuff. At least you can just do more. You're not going to have a 20 minute stage anywhere, but at least you can just do more of the same runs well, can, and yeah, yeah actually like, accumulate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what's the like thing? We'll backtrack a little bit. Yeah, but what's the like thing? Remy where is at the moment. Yeah, that's so sick, man. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like I, so I was like at Loose Fest with him when that happened, and um, then yeah. yeah real heavy man yeah and then so yeah i had to just like we we already had flights booked back to canada like going over to whistler That's right. so yeah i just like stayed with him in the hospital for like three to, yeah three days and then like my flight was in like a couple of days it was like he was still in a coma so like yeah. he was sort of talking at that point but then he like went when i left he sort of that like went a bit deeper like into it yeah. sort of thing and then he was fully out but he doesn't he doesn't remember like any of it anyway no like the start of it but yeah, so then I yeah I like went home by myself and then yeah flew mm. out to Canada. But yeah, man, he's just it was funny. Eh? It's sick seeing him where he's definitely matured a lot. Yeah. like he was. I like, get that feeling. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Man, he was in my van with me. Like yeah, <laughs> it was such a little rant, eh? Like, yeah, just yeah, just such a pest. Like he still would be. Like it's his personality and stuff. But yeah, it's sick, man, to see where he's like taking it, man. I yeah. think he's had screwed on a little bit more. Yeah, the last couple of years, definitely. Sure. Eh? Like he's realized, yeah, it's cool though. Like he's realized his place, mm. like in the yeah. industry, and he's yeah, he's getting it done. Not everyone has to be a World Cup race, right? No, nah, that's it. Not. Yeah, not everyone can do it. Like, and he, I think, if he did get his like throat sorted out, like, I think he's still got some breathing issues mm. from where they put like the tracheostomy in. But yeah, yeah, like he could probably still still oh, qualify to World Cup. Yeah, 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 but it's yeah. Not for everyone, eh? Even racing, like there's so many fast dudes out there, but yeah, you, yeah, not everyone can lay down a race run, sort of thing, or not Josh everyone Button. wants to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like he's one of yeah. the fastest in the world. Yeah. Where was your first like 2017? Was that the year before the Enduro Wet Season? No, no that was the yeah, that was, eh? it was yeah. yeah, yeah. I picked a hell of a year to start. <laughs> so yeah, well that was the fast. first year yeah. we had. Um, yeah, so I was living in Queenstown, and then the first one I did, it must have been the first of the year too, was Road to Rora, when it was the absolute yeah, yeah. mudder and wind yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, the internet um, blew up because wind blew yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was funny, eh? I, I don't know. I just thought I was just riding. I'd never done an enduro. I think I'd maybe done like one back in WA or something yeah, before that. Yeah. Or maybe, oh, no, maybe two or three. We did that nationals, um, national champs in Adelaide as well. Yeah, yeah 16. The, the Eagle, yeah. 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 Um and yeah, so I went over for that to race the downhill and like the crankworks downhill and the AWS and it was just like an abs it was probably the hardest day I've done on a bike still to this day. Like yeah. the liaison times were all made in the dry sort of thing. So when it rained yeah. it was like gnarly to make to make yeah, your okay. time like start yeah. times and stuff. Like you'd get there with yeah, two or three minutes to go. And it was like, it was actually an eight hour day on the bike. Yeah. And it was like, you had to commute from Rotorua to the trails and back. So it ended up being like, a, I don't know why they did that, but it was like 65k a day or something. Yeah. But yeah, so I was pretty stoked. Like, Just to I ended up, it. yeah, like I was That's stoked. Good. And then, yeah, I was ended up 38th. And like, I still got some of like my best. I've got a couple of like top 10 stage times and stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah, first time I've done, I was like, oh, this is sweet. Yeah. Like, and yeah. Then, yeah, for like two years, I like just couldn't get back to that point. Like yeah. it was like, yeah, being like that was like my best result. Like my first one was my best result for like a few years sort of thing. Like because you didn't take it seriously, you reckon? Or? I don't know. I think a bit of a combo. I think like just living in Queenstown and having that environment mm. where you're riding all gnarly stuff all the time yeah. definitely would have helped. But yeah, 
and then from but from that point, I definitely reckon the competition, like it started mm. getting more and more competitive. Like those it like those two like I guess like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen like was well, Jerome a top thirty yeah. wasn't like a hard to get. I don't yeah. reckon. Yeah, yeah. like not it was only like, from experience because I wasn't there, but yeah, from seeing how it's changed in the last like four or five years, oh. it's yeah, it's like. Every single year, pretty right. much everyone's just doing a downhill race run in like just going yeah, that of them. balls yeah. out to the wall, yeah. like every single yeah, every single stage. If you watch like Josh uh, Jack Moyer's footage now, yeah. it's like what? yeah, like, yeah, it's gnarly to be going that fast and stuff. You don't know. Like I think I, yeah, I'm lucky in that sense. I don't, I don't know if I'm like just dumb or it's like a bit of a skill, but like I can ride stuff pretty quick after one. Yeah, one run. Like, you would definitely get caught out every now and then. Yeah. But, yeah. What? So what you, that would have been, yeah, Rotor. Did you just do Rotor or did you go to Taz as well? Mm, oh, I did Tazzy as well. And I, yeah, that was a bit of a mare, that one. Eh? I blew, that looked, blew up my back wheel yeah. in practice, right. then blew up my front wheel in practice. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I had broken ribs for the race and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah right. and then I was still going all good for like the first couple of stages, like top forties. And then I sprinted and like snapped my snapped my derailleur. So yep. I like had to like yeah, push my way back to um back to the pits. Tram sorted that out for me. Yeah. And then I like literally was like on the limiter going like I think my heart heart rate was like hundred and eighty five beats per minute <laughs> for like yeah. Yep like 50 minutes to like make it to the, my next stage time and I literally missed it by one rider so I got a five oh. second time penalty and then I blew my back wheel up so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that one yeah. rather forget that one yeah but then so then after that we went over over to Europe and yeah did a few more over there and then yeah did the one in Whistler and that but that's when I sort of started to yeah transition more in yeah. Euro stuff is that the year of like where Whistler was just ridiculous or was that 18 where Whistler um, had that massive race. That was yeah, like no, we had that one, one long, real long stage. Yeah. Um, I think it would have have to be in like twenty minutes stage. Yeah, top of the world. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Man, maybe made me feel like I couldn't even ride a bike. Like yeah. it got into like, <laughs> yeah, got, it was like sort of, and that was the first stage of the day too. So you're just like yeah. super cold, just roll into that, absolutely cooked. Got passed by like two real fast locals that were behind me, and yep. I was just like, "What am I doing?" And then yeah, dropped into the top <laughs> top of ride don't slide goggles, fog gas. I was like, oh, "I'll get rid of these things." Put them on my bar, and then got to the top of a shoot, and they like wrap around my front brake lever. Oh, I just had a huge <laughs> over the bars down <laughs> shirt. I was like, "But yeah, yeah literally just riding with like yeah." I remember just like spitting into the front of my helmet like multiple times, and just like all yeah. elbows down, like just like Fine. you couldn't even ride. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely a different yeah whole different thing. Eh, doing. Yeah, long stages in AWS from mm. trying to sort of go from like a five minute stage being your longest stuff back home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then... yeah maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, more beers. Another pirate life. Another for walk. I mean, a blowout. Um... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh, here we go. It <laughs> <laughs> was quick. Okay. Yeah. Smash that out. <laughs> what um? What was your best result in the EWF? Like as of today? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the last. That's yeah. Sort of annoying, eh? But yeah, the last one. I, no, no. Last <laughs> one I did was like the best. Best yeah, result okay. I've had. So yeah, I got thirty six at uh, uh, Les Ors, like a two day one in two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, me yeah, me, Laura and my yeah, little boy Louie at the time was like yeah. eight months, went over and did that. Um yeah, and that was I was pretty I was stoked with that because eh? mm-hmm. I was only I took like a couple of wrong wrong turns on stages and stuff and I think my top my goal was like a top thirty and I think I was like twelve seconds off that. So I was good. right there. So man, I was yeah, I was real stoked with that. Especially with a French one too. That's like those yeah. French Enduros are like definitely the hardest sort of, of the shot. Yeah, yeah. They will like know the track and they're already like fast. Oh. Yeah, and it's just like a slightly different 
yeah, style of racing, like doing foot plants on walking trails to get around, like yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah. street corners and yeah. stuff. Like it's always yeah, yeah, yeah they always throw something at you over there, sort of thing. Yeah, you would be kid. Yeah, sure for like is. yeah, for a couple of yeah, a couple of them. Dad came over too, which was like good and it was a big help. But yeah, 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 did like two two races over there, like one in yeah, one in Italy and one in France when they were yeah, Louis was like eight months old, like crawling into being a general menace. Yeah, yeah, That's the insane, slide over man. was a bit of a job, eh? But how do you like focus on your racing and stuff and you got all that going on as well? Is it like hard or you just kind of gave you a reason to do good? Um. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, definitely, like, makes you want to sort of do well for your family. I think, like, not not as much then as it is now because, like, now Louis knows, he knows, like, what I'm doing and mm. sort of, like, he knows, he, like, appreciates what I'm doing. Like, he'll if I win and stuff, he's, like, frothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, well, yeah, yeah, like, but it's definitely hard to prioritise training and then mm. you, you feel guilty because you're not, yeah, you, you should be spent well, and it's yeah. like, yeah, it's always just a constant balancing act, eh? But yeah, just real lucky that Laura's real supportive. Yeah, all the sure. she knows it's not forever. I think that's what she thinks, anyway. So. <laughs> I'll leave that for now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, you got Sam Hill that does it with, what has he got, eight kids now? Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. Josh Carlson got like three or four, like, yeah, it's yeah. pretty insane yeah. to see them. Definitely be a lot easier if you could actually just train during the day and not have to work and then come home and train and have kids. But true, yeah, yeah. you take what you get, eh? Yeah, yeah. Probably makes you stronger. Yeah, I reckon. Bit of mental <laughs> mental fortitude. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Maslin. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> no, he's gonna be strong tomorrow. Yeah. Asking about what I. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. So, um, you did all that as a privateer, like. Yeah, yeah. For those, so those years, like when I was, so yeah, the last year was seventeen. Um, that I was like hooked up by Giant Oz, and then after mm. that, it was like two years. I was yeah getting like top 40s at World Cups and Enduros like in the same year and I was just riding for like a bike shop like even mm. yeah like they, I couldn't even get like a real good deal on a bike or anything like I was just paying like shop, mm. shop costs on bikes like that's yeah yeah were you like going. putting yourself out there as such like were you like approaching brands or yeah yeah like I definitely I was sending like lots of emails and stuff like I guess it's yeah, it's just hard, eh, being from WA. You just, you, it's, yeah, you just, you're not in the limelight, eh? Like, all the distributors are from over east mm. and stuff. So, like, if you're not in their eye, like, they can't see, they just look at, like, your results on a bit of paper, like, mm. like on your resume. They're not seeing you, like, on the podium at that race that they're supporting that weekend yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. So, it's, yeah, you definitely just end up flying under the radar a little bit, I reckon. Yeah. I think, like, the Australian distribution scene has been so far behind on socials as well. So even if you have a social media presence, probably only until this year, like, that actually matters. To yeah, them. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's always, I don't know, you just look at, it's never, it's not the same thing, obviously, but you look at America and you look, like, at the level of support for mm. how quick some people are and you're like, it doesn't really add up. In your yeah. mind, if you're from Australia, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Was that like off putting or anything, or you just didn't really care? Or, uh, like, yeah, I was definitely like pretty bitter about it for like mm. a couple, like, for, yeah, like a couple of years because I like genuinely, genuinely felt I was like fast enough to be on a work. Like, if I, yeah, if I could do that mm. as a full time job, didn't have to work and train in mm. like 40 degree heat after, like, yeah, I'm went and like worked like four weeks on one week off like in the mines and stuff for like eight months yeah, to right. like fund my world cup yeah like, yeah <laughs> world cup year in like yeah. 2018 so and like training doing 12 hour day like out in like yeah 40 to 45 degree okay. heat and yeah. then trying to train like in the gym after work and stuff after yeah. doing a 12 hour day so yeah I, I definitely was like a bit bitter on it at that point because it was i just sort of i don't know he yeah 
it's hard. Like I'm not I'm not like a super outgoing person to people that I don't know either. So it's like it you definitely do have to put yourself out there and everything. Yeah. At World Cups and stuff. But yeah, I definitely like knew enough people. But it's yeah, I don't know. It's hard enough to get support if you're from Australia, let alone like from WA. Like you got to be something real special, sort of thing. For sure. Mm. Like there's not even like today. There's not that many. I mean, other than the top mouth one, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, there's not that many kind of local crew that get support that are fast on like a national level. Nah, nah, that's it. And it's um, yeah, it's just like a completely different thing over here. Like over here, there'll be guys that are like real fast, and they'll be like real close to you. And then you go over to like do an EWS, mm. or you go and you're like just different. I don't know if it's they're just yeah, they don't acclimatised to the trails as well or like just mm. the whole I don't know, the whole environment and the scene sort of thing but yeah, there's definitely people that go like real good in Australia that like kind of flop when they go overseas because yeah. it is like real different but yeah, I'm definitely lucky that I sort of managed to transcend the two mm. a little bit sort of thing. I definitely think it's like more relevant or prevalent now because there's not like a strong national series either. Like, yeah. Could, yep. No, it's so hard to get to a proper national race. Yeah, definitely. And then how are you like, yeah, the only thing that you can sort of do mm. is like social stuff because mm. what, like, there, are, there aren't any races happening. Like, even before COVID, it was like kind of, it was, there wasn't much going on. Yeah. So it's how do you, like, how do you prove your worth to sponsors if you're just racing in Australia? Because, mm. like, they're only, yeah, cannonball. National champs, probably the only count. things that mattered. Well, like, because the, the way it works now, like, do you even have a national cup level race? You have, you might have one in WA. Yeah. No one else is going to go to that. Nah, nah, I wouldn't have a, I don't even know if I'm so lost with it all now. I don't, yeah. I don't even know where it's at with, like, or especially now with all cycling, like, and different tiered stuff. It's, yeah. It's, oh, a no, it's all a bit of a headache, eh? Nothing yeah. beats when, like, after this horrible times that Dean Lucas won it without knowing. Like, that was... Like the, yeah, 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 yeah. that was yeah. the best year ever. Yeah. yeah. But now you've kind of got some support from groups of Pirate Life. Yeah. Grey Zone. Yeah. Racing. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> the epitome of fitness over yeah. here, Tom Maslin. Yeah. Oh, my God. Fuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like uh, getting the support from Nathan, the crew, and, and what he's kind of thought it out for? Yeah, it was unreal, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I met... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I first met the boys. Uh, they came over for York, like, and did, um, like, I think it was, like, a national level, like, enduro that we, that the, the local club, yeah, okay. like, like yeah. WA Gravity, ran. No? No. 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 It's a local place. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. right. You picked the wrong one to come over for. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like I, yeah, ended up, yeah, me and mate ended up having a yarn to him and stuff and sort of, yeah, yeah just had like a good chat to him and stuff and didn't think anything more of it. And then, um, yeah, like six months later, nice, yeah, gave me a message and then a call out of the blue sort of thing and asked if I'd be interested in, in the whole setup and stuff. And I was sort of still tied to um, Lusty with, um, yeah, running sort of like a little deal with them, which is sweet because mm. I was getting good support as well. And yeah, so I talked to them, and they were yeah, they were like yeah, if you could yeah, if you're getting more support, then that's sweet. Like yeah. you're still like under contract to run these brands, but yeah, like that's yeah. sweet. Like if you want, if you if they're going to give you more support, like we give you like yeah, full support to go mm. do that as well. So yeah, it was real cool for the first. So that was middle of. 2020 and then mm. um, came on board for the full thing for 2021 on the full yeah. team with all their sponsors. So, yeah, yeah it's just a stick. Yeah, such a good setup. Eh? Like, it's, yeah, it's pretty relaxed and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of good boys on the team. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's unreal. Like, it's the best, yeah, best support I've had, like, from a team ever in my career sort of thing. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, just being able to, like, actually travel to races and sort of, like, getting subsidised and paid your way to get yeah. to them, like, makes a massive difference. We yeah. even, like, I, I don't know how it works, but having, like, all that bike support, component yeah. support, everything like that, yeah, so that's, it's going to be yeah. huge. Yeah, like, yeah, it's massive, eh? Just the stuff that you're, like, that I'm able to get 
to, like the events I'm able to get to because of it, I like probably wouldn't be able to get mm. to otherwise. Like, yeah, definitely pretty lucky to be on the setup. I saw you like at nationals this year racing, and you were the fastest. Like you looked the fastest on a trail bike. I think Timmy and Button popped you a little bit. Like, I think it was like nah, I got him, mate. Got I was the fastest trailie. Even yeah, the crash. Right. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Like you national champs. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny, like, because you mentioned kind of dirty on that race. Though. <laughs> yeah, the qualified so good, and then yeah. I was just like, yeah, qualified second, and I was only like, I think I was a second behind Booker, and I was like, oh, in like the yeah. absolute mud. I was like, oh sweet, and then yeah, race round. It was just me and him sitting sitting up there at national champs. Yeah. Like, it's pretty funny, <laughs> and yeah, I just like just cooked it a bit and just like slammed into a tree and like would have lost like four or five seconds like easily like came to yeah, the full right. stop on like yeah. a fast section and I think yeah I ended up eighth but I was still like I think I was like point yeah second and a half off the podium and I think yeah. if I went four seconds quicker I would have been second like beating Dino yeah, right. so I was that like would have been yeah I, I would have loved to see beat Dino yeah yeah but yeah that was definitely like a bit of a like that event was definitely like a bit of a turning point I reckon in my mind that I was hmm. like you always I always especially being from WA like you, you should always feel like the outcast yeah sort of thing like at na- even at nationals and then at world cups especially because everyone's like they're big teams and you're just hmm. they're like what am I doing here but you still, you still get yeah. the results but yeah like it's it's hard to feel like you belong sort of thing yeah. so yeah yeah that was sort of a bit of a turning point I reckon well it's like Going right back to the start when you said like you would learn how to pump and stuff on BMX tracks and that. Yeah. Like watching you ride at nationals, it was so like, evident that you could pump and push through those ruts because everyone else was pedaling. Yeah. And you were just like popping and playful and. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, especially coming from not even having a BMX background as well. I guess yeah. like it's just something that it was probably only like two years ago where I like really realised that it was something that was like so beneficial like it definitely still takes effort but it's just free speed really like if mm. you're pumping off and like making natural transitions and stuff well, especially if like some of those rooty sections and <laughs> from that gnarly are like off camera if you pedal you're losing the, yeah that's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you've always got to be like working to keep your momentum going up the hill and like yeah not yeah. fall down the hill whereas if you're yeah you were pumping and you're just like hopping back up the hill it was so sick yeah. to watch I was oh, like, sick. like Who's this me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, that was a. How was nationals that year for you? Like, like coming back from COVID and stuff. Did you race Bright the year before? I don't think the year before. I think I missed a couple of years, so I hadn't ridden like a downhill national champs in like uh, yeah, two or three years or something. Mm. So we were just we were there for like the the AWS Gold yeah. qualifier event yeah. the week before, really, and then we just yeah, it was the weekend after, so we were like, well. Yeah, it'd be stupid not to, to hang around mm. and do that as well, even like on the trail bike. So I didn't really have I didn't have any expectations. It was like I yeah. thought I'd sort of be like, I don't know, top fifteen yeah. sort of thing really, like realistically, especially with the track being like as gnarly as it was, like on it was a, trail a pretty bike. gnarly flow yeah. trail. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So yeah, it was definitely yeah, it was different, eh, going back to doing like a dash and mm. downhill national champs and stuff again. Yeah, but yeah, definitely reckon I'll be trying to do some more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Are you gonna go back next year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. Kane, eh? yeah. 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 You're gonna have that young kid, Cam Ryan, like chasing you down. Yeah. At least a couple of lines from last year. Eh? Yeah. 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 I reckon. Yeah. Oh, Tommy's showing the lines. This year. <laughs> the lines the triangle. Tommy's at the front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right in the middle. Yeah, Nathan's just busting his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just talking shit off Yeah, he's yeah. just making money. Just organizing holograms. Yeah. Getting me out of jail. Yeah. Twenty grand bail. Oh man. We'll start wrapping things up. Yeah. What have you got planned for the? Well, we're coming up to the end of the season, right? Yeah. Have you got much plans for the off-season? What are your plans for next year? Still got like two or three state and Giro and downhill. Oh, really? Rounds like yeah, right. yeah, we've got a massive season over there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah, so just have a definitely, it seems like it's been a long season. So, yeah, have a pretty good break. Um, yeah, get stuck into some 
off season training mm. and stuff, and then let's just sort of see how it pans out, really. Like, yeah, some of us need to train yeah. We're not as busy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But we just, I don't know, kind of threw a bit of a spanner into the works with those three rounds getting cancelled at the start of this year. Yeah, that was brutal. I was yeah. definitely planning on, yeah, getting to those two in Tassie mm. and then one in New Zealand and mm. trying to get to maybe like, I don't know, four or five more in Europe and trying to do sort of seven or eight rounds next year. Yeah. Just having like a proper crack. I don't even care about like trying to make it on a team or anything like that. I just, I'm not satisfied with what I've done mm. at like within racing so far. Like I, I just want to like do, yeah. yeah, do it for myself sort of thing. Like mm. I know I'm capable of those results. Like I just want to prove it to myself sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Get out there and show Remy how Rocky Mountain actually goes. Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 No. I think but, Maydina's got something like planned though to kind of make up for the EWS, yeah, and I think yeah. it's going to be pretty big. And yeah, cool, so I'll so. definitely try. Yeah, get over to that stuff, and then just pending. It sounds like we might actually be able to leave the country. Maybe, uh, probably not me because I'm from WA, so we're, mm. we're not allowed to go anywhere. Lucky I yeah. made it out to here. Yeah, but True. yeah, yeah. If, if I can get over to EWS next year, then I'll definitely be doing a few rounds. Yeah, yeah in Europe yeah. or yeah, in Canada. So. Yeah. 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 I, want, I really want to head over and just watch. Yeah. All yeah. Day. Yeah. It's a saying. Yeah. yeah. Sick. All right. We'll wrap it up. The last three questions. Yeah. Everyone's favorite. Um, I guess what? Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tommy's actually oh, one of. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he actually listens to this a lot and he gives me thoughts about it. Yeah. yeah you good. Maybe we'll get you on here one day. You're the last guy yeah. from this team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six feet yeah. away. Feelings mutual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what advice do you have for those guys trying to, you know, work the nine to five, have family? Like, um, you don't work nine to five, man. I yeah. work with you. You work nine to nine. Two, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nine to nine thirty-five. Yeah. Um. What advice do you have to those guys trying to get like onto the world scene or trying to just do well at mountain biking? But um, yeah, it's just all balance, I reckon. Eh? Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you've got to, you've definitely got to factor in like the people around you and stuff, and like in your family and mm-hmm. the people that are like directly sort of yeah affected by what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But if you're not happy, like. Because yeah. you're doing stuff like I love spending time like with my family and I love yeah like love everything about my life. But if I'm not doing stuff for myself like at least a couple couple hours yeah sort of every week, then I'm not gonna be a happy dad or a happy husband or you know what I mean. So it's, yeah yeah you still gotta make time for yourself and then but yeah like still it's just yeah. That balance, Everyone right? gets the same amount of time in the day. Eh? It's just what what you do you with it. Like, yeah. yeah, you might have to work for eight hours of it, but yeah, you can definitely if you want it bad enough. Like, you can mm. definitely find the time to, to put in the time and yeah, oh, for sure. make it count for sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, is there anything you wish you kind of changed or done differently up until now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get rid of Tommy. Yeah. Get rid of Tommy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. I don't. Yeah, I don't reckon really, eh? Because it's yeah. all like I'm stoked with where I am at the moment, really, eh? So and mm. yeah, wouldn't wouldn't be here without everything else. That's, actually, there's <laughs> there's one thing that I really wish didn't happen, and like not heaps of people know about this, but yeah, I like was at Lenza High Day, and it was. 2016 is the first year I was over there and I like qualified I think I qualified like 48 or something. I just beat Petey like in qualifying oh, in his yeah, last cool. year and I was just like it was like a shit run as well like mm. I thought I, like I didn't think I'd qualify and I got to the one and I was like oh sweet and then um, yeah I was like found some like stick lines in the morning was like feeling like insane like just on that like level that I don't reckon I've been there since maybe like a couple times but I was like man I'm on for one here eh? yeah and I was like pedaling around at the top, and um, I'm like a little bit dyslexic, 
So yeah, like, yeah. I read my start time as being 10 minutes different to what it was. <laughs> and I was like pedaling around at the top of like the World Cup, like warming up and stuff. And I was like on, I'm on one here. Yeah. And then like, and then I seen Dino drop in and then he qualified like two riders in front of me. And I was like, Whoa, what's going on here? And I like pedaled over to old mate. The, the commissaire at the start going, he's like, no, impossible. <laughs> he's like, I, he's like, I, called, I called your number and I was like no way uh, yeah missed my start yeah start time so yeah try not, <laughs> try not to dwell on that too much but that's probably definitely one that I'd, I'd change I reckon eh? yeah yeah I was pretty off myself that weekend and that was like that was the last World Cup I did that year so it was a pretty long drive back to the UK before uh, yeah <laughs> After that, it's pretty salty. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one thing I'd change. But other than that, I don't reckon anything. Oh, fuck. I think Alex present actually almost did the same thing when he was mechanicing for Jackson. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit going on on the weekend. Like, it'd be pretty easy. Well, it was pretty easy done. Yeah. 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 Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. That's my proudest moment, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, last question. Always the hardest for some people. But uh, what music do you listen to to get amped up or get motivated? Or... Amped up? Oh, pretty broad spectrum, eh? But I reckon it's pretty hard Pretty hard to go past a bit of Parkway Drive, I reckon. Oh, yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just watch... What do you say? Oh, Tom, Tom Maslin's <laughs> band. Yeah. Oh, back nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, Parkway Drive. I reckon just for gent like just watching those two like those two docos that yeah. they've done like man have you just, seen the third yeah yeah it's good yeah. Eh? yeah 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 but yeah I pretty much span everything I eh? like yeah Aussie hip hop like general sort of Aussie yeah. music and yeah, yeah and a bit of heavy stuff come back to that every now and then but yeah I reckon just that stuff like I don't know just associating it with all the stuff you see like yeah. in a movie and stuff like just gets you amped eh? yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah I love that stuff eh? yeah, yeah. Yeah, easy man. Well, yeah, thanks so much for doing this and uh, yeah, taking time out of your night to get this done. And yeah, hope the punters didn't make it too painful to <laughs> yeah. listen to. Eh? But yeah, it's gonna be some, it's gonna be some, it's gonna be some editing in yeah. this. Yeah, this is way good next week. Yeah, sure, man. We'll, uh, we'll enjoy the rest of the night. Let's go have some dinner. Yeah, boy. Woo! Thanks for listening to that one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Super, super stoked, as I said, to say that I had Jordo on the podcast. He's a super interesting person. If I say super again, we'll make it a drinking game. You have to say shots all the time. I am feeling a bit flat um, today just because I have been working out for my fat to fast project where I'm going to go race nationals. And again, thanks to our sponsors, Tailored Trails, FE Sports, NS Dynamics, Franked, Two Up Bike Co, Dirt Surfer, My Guards, Crush Oz, Fist. Those guys are killing it. They really help support the podcast and support me in my adventures. So if you could support those brands out, it'd be amazing. There is a new sponsor coming on board as well, which is going to be huge. And I really can't believe what that is happening. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out on YouTube for all the Fat to Fast stuff. Um subscribe like do all those types of things and if you could spread the love by reviewing this podcast sharing it with your mates or sharing it with your nana that'd be great anyway till next time thank you